nobody tells Tunde Ajayi what to do because I come from the scratch. I made all these decisions on my own. The domestic scene is always going to be there. Right now, I'm not saying none of them can get to the level I'm at, but right now, I've surpassed them. And I just don't think there's anybody in the country that it's super February that can beat Sam. You're only as good as your last fight, and I don't want to be remembered for my last fight with Josh Warrington. Hello and welcome to No Filter Boxing. This week we go inside the training camps of two of the UK's biggest talents, Anthony Yard <laughs> and Sam Bowen. <laughs> We'll also hear from Carl Frampton on his aims and what the future holds. Both Yard and Bowen are ready to go in 2019, and for Yard, it's the chance to prove the doubters wrong and propel himself into world title contention. They say, do not disturb the beast, for it will take over. Hunting its prey, showing no mercy. They say, do not disturb the beast. But no matter how careful you step, the beast is always awake. just begun. This is an everyday thing, getting ready to go to work, meet the main man, the AY. <laughs> you see, this is like my, my shrine. And you got the greatest. This is like a reminder to me, to a personal note, to myself every day, you know, uh, what's, the, the, what's capable. You know, Muhammad Ali come from a small town, Louisville, Kentucky, and, and he became the greatest. So, you know, I put Anthony up there because that's what I want for Anthony. And also, <laughs> don't worry about money. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Anyone that's seen myself and Anthony, it's always fun. It's always fun, it's always laughter, and it's always love. Not just me and Anthony, our whole team. Anthony was brought to me by my very good friend, Jolene, and I said, uh, what have you won in the amateurs? And he said, nothing. And I said, all right, we'll go back and win something then. <laughs> and then I might consider to train you. And Anthony entered the Haringey Box Cup and knocked out every single opponent, came back with a winning trophy and said to me, there you go. Anthony, for me, just fits like a glove. We have the same character. You know, four o'clock in the morning, we'd be cracking jokes and laughing. We just fit, we fit right. Nobody tells Tunde Ajayi what to do. I made all these decisions on my own, you know? And I had to be strong enough to say no. Last year, 2018, we had three world title offers from three long, reigning, very accomplished, experienced fighters. Kovalev, you know, Alvarez, Baterviev, and then in December, Volstic. So that's four people, but I have to say to myself, hold on, what, what's the rush? <laughs> Anthony Yard had 12 amateur fights. He's only been a professional three years, but such is the dedication of the young man People want to see him become a world champion now. But guess what? When he becomes a world champion, that's it. There's no going back to area level, Southern area, European, intercontinental. We're a world champion and we're going to stay world champions for a very, very long time. What I'm seeing from Anthony every day in the gym is incredible. But still, you have to be calculated. You don't make kamikaze moves. This isn't a film. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> this isn't this is a um, Rocky IV or Rocky III. You know, you don't, you, you don't play boxing. People say, when's he going to fight someone good? Hold on. So wasn't Nicolas O'Clocker good when he, when he fought Arthur Abraham? When he fought Saki Obika? 
when he had never been stopped by these world-class fighters. So hold on, so it's, they're good when they fight these other fighters, but when they fight Anthony, they're not good. No, let me tell you what it is. Anthony Yard makes them look like they're not good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, in the office. For someone that started boxing at 19 years old, I'm doing well. And, um, you know, the stage I'm at right now, it shows people that no matter when you start, how you start, if you start, you can achieve big things. Anyway. <laughs> people want to see you let off the leash, though, don't they? Of course. of course. Are you itching to get off the leash, too? Do you know what? I feel like I'm off the leash. This is the only man. Get off me. Where we come from, it's already made us tough. Hot pepper sauce. This is, this is the season. <laughs> if you go back in the history books and look up, legends' careers. Look at the building blocks, look how they got to. Canelo Alvarez, who's the current fighter now, he had over 30 fights before he even came on the radar. Deontay Wilder, who just had one of the biggest fights um, in history against Tyson Fury. These are times where these fighters gained their experience. And then again, they, they, they're televised, and then people start to know who they are. I was televised from early in my career and I've been doing my job. So that's why there's so much pressure on my shoulders to say, oh, fight this guy, fight that guy. I haven't shied away from no challenges. So, so, go out and get your home. Is every day like this? Is every day every, every day? Every single day. Every day is a good day. Every, our camp is, is just fun. When your career is going well, don't complain. Just take it in a stride. Enjoy your career. Enjoy the journey. You've heard all the names. Callum Johnson, Boatsy. Is that something that you want to get amongst? Right now, I'm not saying None of them can get to the level I'm at, but right now I've surpassed them. The domestic scene is always going to be there. And these people that you're talking about, there's certain people that are doing their job, there's certain people that's not. There's certain people that's coming through, and there's certain people that are fading off into the background. A name like, again, Joshua Boatsy, I see that fight happening down the line. If he continues to do what he's doing, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. That fight's inevitable to happen. So I'm not in the kind of mind frame of saying you have to deal with your domestic level before you rise. I'm not waiting for nobody. If you've seen from the beginning of my career, I haven't called out nobody. I haven't ducked nobody. I haven't shied away from nobody. The facts that have made sense for me to make, we've tried to make. I'm going based off of how much people are calling me out. So I must be the person that everyone's looking to. And again, that's just me, for me being in my own little bubble. I'm not there focused on what anyone else is doing. I'm literally in my own bubble, me, my trainer manager, Tunde Ajayi, working hard, having fun. <laughs> I always used to say, like, why is everybody walking into the gym all stiff? Like, you go into the gym and a man's like... Oh. <laughs> it's our old school mindset again, though, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Just because we're fighting, does that mean we can't be happy most of the time? This is 2019. This is the new school. So my thing is that I'm not here to follow anybody. You're looking to change the culture. I'm changing the culture. I said it from the start. I said, I wrote the letter to Robert Smith and I said, I will revolutionise the sport of boxing. If you're not necessarily focused on those British titles or even European titles, what are the goals? What's on the bucket list? It's a journey. How the journey goes, I'm not in control of. I'm only in control of how hard I work. And I'm a strong believer in you reap the benefits of your hard work. So all I'm doing is, I'm fo as I said before, I'm in my bubble. Everyone that's outside of this bubble don't matter to me. So again, people are associating me now with Sergio Kovalev. Are you ready for Kovalev? I feel like I'm ready for anybody. That's just the nature of a, of, a, of a boxer, a fighter, whatever you want to call it. I feel like I'm ready for anybody. But I just believe in dealing with one occasion as it comes. People are saying, oh, this guy said this about you. I say, then he's doing his job. If he's talking about me, it shows me I'm doing something right. He's doing his job and I'm doing my job. He's talking about someone that's above him. If I continue to do what I'm doing, there's always going to be people saying negative things. That's the way the world works. There has to be balance. If I'm not doing my job and no one cares, I've got something to worry about. In life, there's polarity. Good, bad, up, down, left, right, hot, cold. Sometimes you actually just have to laugh at certain comments and just keep your vibe high and keep working. I ain't seen nobody work as hard as him. I've never seen nobody work as hard as him. That's on a serious note. Um, and you know, we know where we are. We know where we're going and we're progressively moving in that direction, so we're successful. <laughs> That's what success is. You're number one for Kovalev. Do you rate him highly? Been world champion for quite a long time. He's been on and off. He lost against um, Andre Ward. He came back and won the world title. He lost it, he won it back. 
He's been at that level for a long time. He's very experienced. He's a hard man, isn't he? Well, yeah, on, t on TV, that's how he appears. He appears um, a hard man on TV, but again, it, it, might, it depends who he's in there with. Um, when he was against Andre Ward, he, j he did look like the, um, the B fighter. He didn't look like the A fighter. Um, so it does matter who you're against. The man himself is entering the building. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and you got to do a few rounds with the champ today. Yeah. So make sure you're ready. You better be because we're ready. We've been training for you. That's what I'm he saying. wants to love. Is there my, you go. This is my boy right We're here. not fighters, we're lovers. <laughs> he's just my friend, man. I told you, he motivates me. The first time I met him, yeah, his mum and his dad brought him down there. And then I just liked him. He had a, a good energy about him. I was training and I got tired. Like, I was finished. I was like, trained for like two hours or whatever. I was ready to finish. And then I looked on the treadmill and he was on the treadmill. So I carried on training for a bit. Then I walked down there and he's doing weights like, on his legs and things like that. So he was in there for about an hour and a half, like doing his training or whatever. So I was like, no. Nah. So the next day I come here, I've done it again, two, two and a half hours. So again, he motivates me. He motivates me, no excuses. He's always happy, isn't it? Yeah. That's why his parents named him Champ. His birth name is Champ. Hey, hey, look. This hey, one. Hey. Let me see, let me see. This one, two, That's it. Lions in the cup. Lions in the cup. Two, 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 Lions in the cup. Lions in the cup. Yes! Yeah. It's always motivation. Everything's motivation. From your childhood, from your last fight, wanting to be better than your last fight. That's it. Love that, love that, love that, love that. You don't want to hurt him, that's why. Just with regards to those critics, is it water off a duck's back or is it motivation for you? I don't believe in pressure, but if you go based off my last performances, to better my last performances, again, that's, that's motivation. To be better than you was last time with a different opponent. Um, it's always going to be motivation for me, all the way to the end. By the end of 2019, I want to be wherever I'm meant to be. On the fence. <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> On the fence. What does that mean? No, I mean, like, non-committal. <laughs> the boxes I want ticked are the boxes that are meant to be ticked. At the end of 2019, wherever I'm meant to be, that's where I'll be. I said the same thing at the end of 2018. I said the same thing at the end of 2017. I said the same thing at the end of 2016. That's how my career's gone. And I'm going to say the same thing at the end of 2019 and the same thing at the end of 2020. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Wherever I'm meant to be at the end of the year, that's where I'll be. After the break, we'll hear from Carl Frampton on why he's still got more left to give. And we visit British super featherweight champion Sam Bowen. He's one of Frank Warren's hottest prospects and hardest workers. Get up in the morning between half four and five, do my morning run, come home, have a shower, have my breakfast, and then go to work. We do uh, 10 hour shifts at work and then do my training in and then travel home. So some days literally it's like 16 hours. So literally when I get home, I'm no good to know when I'm just exhausted, fall asleep watching TV and then go to bed and then pretty much the same thing the next day. Welcome back to No Filter Boxing. It's now time to get an insight into the training camp of Sam Bowen. He's been touted as one of boxing's best kept secrets and knows a 15th straight win could lead to big things this year. A typical normal fight camp would be get up in the morning between half four and five, do my morning run, come home, have a shower, have my breakfast, and then go to work. We do uh, 10 hour shifts at work. We finish early on a Friday, we do 10 hour shifts Monday to Thursday. Um, do that, and then travel up to here. It's about, depending on the traffic, maybe an hour and a half, and then do my training here and then travel home. So some days, literally, it's like 16 hours. So literally, when I get home, I'm no, no good to know when I'm just exhausted, fall asleep watching TV, and then go to bed. and then. Pretty much the same thing the next day. Good, that's it, and again. I just don't think there's anybody in the country that, at Super Fed that can beat Sam. Um, I'll be amazed, and 
with Sam being in the WBO top 10 ratings now, we're going to be looking to push on quite fast. I mean, the champion Ito, I mean, great fighter. I'd be confident with Sam. I mean, I've got full belief in Sam and think he can go all the way. I picked that Cabral. Um, after I picked him, I thought, a bit of a tricky one, that. He's a very good fighter. He went over to Canada and beat Logan McGuinness. It was 21-1 or 21 and one draw, not been beat. Sam's just so fit and strong, was wearing and grinding him down gradually. And, and what a punch to finish with. I mean, one of the knockouts of the year, I mean, especially to the body. He come in from a different angle, which we work on a lot, and, uh, and absolutely flattened him and, and he couldn't get up. I feel I, I boxed relatively well. Uh, felt fit, felt strong. Uh, I went in there, the intention is just to get the win, enjoy it more than anything, and, uh, and that's what I did. I enjoyed the fight and uh, got the outcome I wanted. I had him with a good body shot and he weren't, he weren't coming back from it. So, yeah, I was, I was happy and so was everybody else. It's, it's a good finish and uh, good for TV. <laughs> Chad, <laughs> time, good boy. Super February, I fought for the British title twice to Gomez and Arthur. So, obviously, it's, it's, it's close to my heart, this weight division. And obviously, when Sam won the British title, it, was, it meant so much to me because it's something I couldn't do. And obviously for Sam to go on and do it, it, it meant so much. And the history of the Super Featherweight division, some of the fighters that's won the British title, it's been fantastic. And for Sam to be amongst them names now, it, it's amazing. Especially for a lad that's been working full time as well. To do that and obviously be in the world's top 10. I mean, can you imagine when he's full time and hasn't got to worry about, about work and just concentrate on his boxing? I always train off my fights and I always concentrate on the fighting and my last fight, every interview I had people saying that it was more it was like as if I was boxing Woodstock I thought I've got this fight to concentrate on. He didn't really want to fight me, even when Carl said in that last press conference he was like my best mate next to him, he's saying, Oh we'll wait till this look at the end of the day, if he wants to fight it we will fight but it's gotta be worth my while now, you know. I mean he can't just call the shots, he can't not one minute not want to fight me, then the next minute want to fight me. He's obviously gonna call me out, he's just been beaten, so what's his options are running running slim, you know what I mean? Woodstock's not on Sam's level, I'll be honest with you. There's no interest in that fight for us. I mean, it'll be an easy fight for Sam. It wouldn't last six rounds, and, and that's the gospel truth. Good. I hate track running. <laughs> um, now, I, I, I do a lot of running. This is a brilliant mix up for it. Um, 800 meter sprints inside three minute rounds. It's great for your stamina, great for fitness. But yeah, like I said, I do a lot of mixed up running, a lot of long, short, fast, all, all sorts. Yeah, I go to my local part run, uh, Moira, Conker's part run. I do, I do win that now and again. I think out of the 50, 60 times I've done it, I've won it about 30 times. So, so I, do, I do all right, but there's some, sometimes there's some class runners there that put me to shame, but, but no, it's good. But my mum, yeah, she's uh, got a pub in Boston and uh, she sells endless tickets to my fight. So literally, they have to close the pub for a few hours to come to my fight because no one wants to work and uh, no one's in the pub. So she closes the pub uh, for like a few hours, come watch me fight, and then, uh, then we'll go back there after and party, usually. <laughs> I've never known anybody like it before. Um, super fit, super strong, um, very dedicated, down to earth, very grounded, and yeah, I think we've got a special boy. After defeat to Josh Warrington in December, many thought Carl Frampton would decide to call it a day. We went to see the former two-weight world champion to find out what the future has in store. great contest and surely a great, great win for Josh Warrington. That was a very special fight. Yeah, it was bad shape after that last fight, yeah. It was a pretty brutal fight. I come off on the, the worst end of it, but that um, yeah, was a good fight. He's in trouble! Is he going to go? When Santa Cruz beat me, it took me a good few months to watch it. I tried to watch it one night in bed and I turned it off after a round and a half and then uh, finally came around to watch it. So I will have to watch it at some point, but not, not yet. I had it in my head that I was a retired fighter and I'm done, that's me finished, but I've had a wee bit of time to reflect and I don't think it's right for me to finish on a fight like that, on a, on a really under par performance. Um, after the career I've had, you know what I mean? It would be sad. To, finish on something like that. Frampton's going to have to dig in here. Yeah, I was asked the question yesterday, did, did in the middle rounds, did I ever feel like I'd come back? I never 
never really did. Never, uh, you know, maybe it sounds like a bit of a contradiction, but I was trying to win, but I never thought like I was going to. I was consciously thinking like throughout the fight, just don't get stopped, and um, I didn't. I spoke to my wife, I told her I'm done, and she was over the moon about that. I probably told my kids then, I think I'm done as well. Yeah, probably shouldn't have done that. The first question I was asked by Rosa when I came back home was, we were studying my face and feeling it and stuff. And then he asked me, am I not a champion anymore? So <laughs> he, uh, I said no. I think she would prefer me to pack it in completely, but she understands where I'm coming from. She understands what I'm talking about and how I feel. And you're only as good as your last fight. And I don't want to be remembered for my last fight with Josh Warrington. I want to be remembered for a lot more than that. And I still believe I can, I can beat these guys. I really do. I got it. I got it wrong. Warrington was brilliant on the night. Fully deserved a win. But I, I got it wrong. And still, IBF featherweight champion of the world, Josh. The Leeds Warrior, Warrington! Kid Galahad has a bit of a history with a, the drug issue. No one likes to see people that have been caught um, cheating, succeeding. So I think, I think the whole world will be on Josh Warrington's side. I certainly am. In my heart of hearts, I would like to see Josh Warrington smash the <laughs> right out of Kid Galahad. I hope he wins a fight, that's, that's me being brutally honest. I, I hope he beats him from pillar to post. Oh, great shot. How about that? He wants to be remembered as Ireland's greatest fighter ever. It would be sad to finish on something like that. I want to still believe in winning a world title. That's the bottom line. That's why I'm hoping to continue if I get the right fights. Jimmy's a quality trainer. You know, one minute he's the best trainer in Britain and some people are saying unreal, best in the world, and then the next minute he's on the scrap heap as a trainer. I've been in this game long enough. I know a good trainer when I see one. And Jimmy Moore and Nigel Travis are good trainers. You'll still see a smile on my face, you know what I mean? Even though I lost, it happens at sport at the very highest level, but I know I can win a title. I know Jimmy can, can bring me to become a world champion again. They have to lay absolutely everything on the line now, and they're doing so. Santa Cruz, you know, it would be the decider in a trilogy fight, but the position I am at the minute, I, I lost my last fight for a world title. I can't really be too picky and choosy. I, I'll get what's given to me, and Santa Cruz and Valdez, are, there haven't been negotiations as such, but there's been kind of initial talks, and, and they've reached out. <laughs> If you do beat one of the big boys, then you'd be talking about the Warrington fight again. So that's a loss I would like to avenge at some point. And um, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. The idea and the plan is to go out on top. I'd like to go out on a big win. That's all we have time for this week. 2019 certainly promises to be a big year for Bowen and for Yard. See you next time. Oh, what a great shot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, great shot. Look at this. Oh, oh that surely is. He felt the weight of that one. What a great right hand. Oh, goodness me. Big shots. And the winning run continues.